Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco and uh, today we got another wine, of course, right? Uh, so thanks for coming in. We're going to do a little review here of the 2006 Hans Lang, or Hans, probably Lang, I guess, uh, Pinot Noir. This is from uh, Germany, from the, the Rheingau, and paid $9.98 at, not World Market this time, HEB Plus. Hopefully the label's coming out pretty good. Decided yesterday to go to a different spot than World Market. I mean, World Market's got a pretty good uh, selection of stuff. Went over to HEB. HEB, if you're not from San Antonio or from South Central Texas, um, is, a, is a supermarket chain, and we were over by uh, in the area where they had the bigger version of HEB. They call it Plus. It's kind of they got a bunch of other stuff besides groceries. You know, you can buy furniture and TVs and a whole bunch of other stuff. So we went there and they have a really good wine selection. I don't remember the manager's name, uh, at least the manager that was handling the wine at the time, but. He uh, turned me on to a couple bottles. This was one of them. He said it was kind of a sleeper. So we're going to check it out, and uh, hopefully it's going to be pretty good. Now, first of all, right off the bat, with Pinot Noirs. Pinot Noirs are going to be, um, you're going to be able to see through them. I don't know if you can tell, but like I can easily see my fingers through the glass. They, they tend to be a lighter red uh, then Cabernet Sauvignons and Zinfandels, even Merlots. Pinot Noirs tend to be very, very much see-through-ish. Okay? So, you're going to see that immediately. Wow. Okay, so, when I pulled the glass away, I got this floral floral scent, almost like rose petals, like roses. I'm getting better at this. I would never have picked this up even a week ago. I'm not really good at picking up the floral stuff, but man, this really comes through with that. Um, getting kind of a dark fruit. Can't really tell what it is, so it's probably fruit I've never had before. Maybe a little bit of earthiness. Not stinky, but a little earthy, but yeah, a little bit, a little bit of that. Not, not, not in a, not in a bad, not that stinky, earthy, like musty type scent, but a little bit of that and some rose petal. All right, let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, so I got the, the first thing I got was more floral, more like rose petal flavors, uh, but then those quickly went away. Um, then I get, I get like this uh, fruit explosion, lots of fruit, pretty sweet. Um, manager told me that, that these types of, or this, this particular wine is going to be more of a sweeter Pinot Noir rather than a dry, really, really dry Pinot Noir. And I mean, there's dryness. It's not like, you know, it's like sugary sweet and it's like a, you know, I wouldn't call it a fruit bomb, but there's definitely fruit in there. Um, so it's kind of sweet, but there's a little bit of dryness. You got the tannins working, working the sides of the mouth, working, working the gums. Um, so it's pretty good. And I mean, I'm still tasting, I'm still tasting fruit. So it's got a pretty good finish, pretty long finish on it. Um, I'd say it's more like berries. So uh, as far as the type of fruit it is, not necessarily a strawberry, but, but maybe, yeah, maybe it's just, just, I would say just berries in general. Um, not quite blueberry action, but maybe a little bit of that. So, uh, I think it's really good. I mean, it's very light. It's easy to drink. Um, 
kind of excited because we're going to have this at lunch today. Getting some steaks cooked up. This is probably going to go pretty well with that. Well, all of a sudden, I don't think I've ever heard this one before. I got hot mustard on the nose, even on the palate. And I love hot mustard. I love me some hot mustard. I'll pour that stuff all over the egg rolls. And man, I love that stuff. And I got like a whiff of that. And then I kind of got that taste too. So, uh, so, so something else happened, you know, while the thing was open. The bottle's been open for about a couple hours. And, you know, one thing, I mean, I open these bottles as, as early as I can, try to get about an hour and a half, two hours, or even more. Um, but you have to realize that the wine is up to here. There's really only about that much, actually, surface area. So it is breathing, but it's not like I had left it in the glass for a while, actually decanted it, because then you get more surface area, more oxidation in there. Um, it's really just meant I'm trying not to do, like, just opening it up immediately and drinking it. So I'm trying to give it, give it a chance to... Give me some aromas and some and something on the palate. All right, so let's talk about uh, this area because you know everyone talks about Pinot Noirs from from Burgundy or Oregon or California, but you don't hear much about Germany. All right, so this is in the Rheingau, which there's a bunch of along the Rhine River. There's a bunch of uh, areas, wine growing areas, regions in Germany. They're all real close to each other. There's a couple kind of a little bit farther to the east, but they're all pretty much around the same area. Um, this area, uh, this particular area was near Frankfurt. Um, so if that gives you a little bit of, a little bit of, uh, uh, orientation to where it is in, on the map in Germany. It's very near France, very near Belgium, uh, Luxembourg, all that area. Um, the Hans Lang, uh, winery, they pr primarily produce, um, uh, Rieslings. About 75% of their growing, uh, about 75% of their vineyards are Riesling. This is about, I think it was at 15% of this, and they have about four, they have four other varietals they do that are 5% or less. But so their, their main two wines are Riesling based and Pinot Noir. Um, think about 18 hectares of, I always want to say hect hectakers or whatever, but hectares of um, vineyards. So they, and they've been around since what, 1953. So I looked, at, looked a few things up on their website because I want to know who they were. Um, they said that they're near the uh, towns of Hattenheim and Asmenshausen. I think I got that right. I hope I did. Um, and uh, for the Rheingau, there's 13 regions. Uh, there was 13 regions total. And the Rheingau was one of them in Germany as far as the growing regions. And let's see what else. One little fun fact. Pinot Noir is also skull called... Spat Burgunder or Spat Spat Burgunder, probably Spat Burgunder or Spate Burgunder, probably Spate. I think it's Spate. Anyway, um, so there's another. That's what they call the Pinot Noir grape in, in Germany. So um, I think it was pretty good wine. I'm gonna give this. I'm gonna give this an 89. For once, I don't give something an 82 or an 83. I'm gonna try some more of that. And just there, got a little bit of dust, a little bit of dustiness. So it's really opening up. It's really developing. Um, it's probably, I'm going to say 89, still 89, because it doesn't have that, that, that wow factor enough. It's a wow for me right now, but it doesn't have that wow factor enough to, to push it into the 90s. The Pinot Noir I had at uh, last week, which was a week ago today, you know, the episode was on Friday, that had wow. I didn't score it, but that would probably be in the 90s at the, at the Brasserie Preville. Uh, that would have been in the 90s. Um, this is pretty close. I'm starting to like Pinot Noirs now that I drink a few nice ones, because the ones I usually have aren't that good. All right, so uh, let's see what else about today. Uh, <clears throat> just as always, uh, click the links, f friend me up on Twitter, uh, friend me up on the Facebook page. Hopefully I'll have my profile name soon, though... Kind of boo about Facebook. I don't have a thousand fans on my fan page, so I can't get that as my profile name for the fan page. That's a real big, you know, a little sad about that. But uh, I'll still try to get my profile name. There's a way to do it on Friday night. 
Um, so we're going to work on that. Uh, and remember the sommelier school, web only content. I'm uploading a whole bunch of videos to YouTube just because, I mean, more eyeballs, more places, they're very popular. So I'm in the process of uploading all those. My big concern is usually you have a 10 minute uh, limit for videos on YouTube. And I've got a couple of these videos that have been longer than 10 minutes. Um, no sommelier school on YouTube, only in Vidler and on the website. Um, let's see. We've got uh, click the ads, get all that stuff. Phone vibrated. Thought it might have been a phone call. And um, yeah, friend me up, email me if you have any questions, Twitter me, whatever you need to do. And uh, we will see everybody again next time. Thank you for coming in. Forgot one more thing. Shout out. Shout out to Derek. Not the other Derek from a couple days ago, though he's a cool guy. Derek on Twitter. I'll put the spelling, but it's D-E-R-R-I-C-H. Another guy keeps retweeting my posts. Had to run up and down the stairs and all that. So, uh, <laughs> shout out to Derek. Thank you very much for uh, doing my retweets. And uh, we'll see everybody again next time.